Hey, I'm Bill Marion, and this is A Nose for Life. The last video I released was about the reopening of the Skyline Drive in Shenandoah National Park at the conclusion of the 2019 government shutdown. My last video is like most of my videos. I share gorgeous mountaintop views along with my commentary, for whatever that's worth. I recorded this amazing barred owl while we were capturing video on the Skyline Drive, and it fascinates me. Now don't get me wrong, there are tens of thousands of pictures of owls online, but owls aren't something you see every day. At least I don't. Anyway, after making that video, I wanted to learn more about owls in the Skyline Drive. And like most people who go a-googling, I found myself learning things I didn't mean to learn. But this time, it wasn't the conflicting theories of quantum physics, or why The Last Jedi is the worst movie that ever happened to society. No, I learned about people who watch birds or bird watchers. Only not all people who watch birds are bird watchers, but just because you enjoy birding doesn't mean you're a birder, and there are some birders who might be into twitching, and twitching is like chasing. Welcome to the world of bird watching. In this video, I'm going to try to explain what all this means, and that's not easy because I'm not an expert on the subject. In fact, this information is new to me. I just like making YouTube videos about things I find interesting, and I make these videos just for you. But if you have more information or just want to add your two cents, please leave your two cents in the comments below. As usual, I've placed information links and a fair use statement in the description. Now, I enjoy watching birds, and I have my dad to thank for that, but you can't say that I'm into birding, never mind twitching. More on twitching later. Even people who own birds might not be into bird watching, and now is as good of a time as any to explain that bird watching is also called birding. But birding is not just looking at birds. Birding is the enjoyment of everything about birds, including listening, learning, and of course seeing birds. Birding is filled with both amateurs and professionals who love studying birds, and it became fashionable way back in the late 19th century. But it really depends on the source and even where you live as to what it means to be a birder, bird watcher, chaser, or twitcher. Originally, the term birding was used to describe bird hunting as a sport, but now it means studying, listening, or doing anything having to do with birds. But you can enjoy birding and not be a birder. Jonathan Rosen from The New Yorker writes, Bird watchers look at birds. Birders look for birds. Rosen suggests that birders are like chasers or twitchers. And from what I can tell, that's not necessarily the case, but that doesn't mean he's wrong because these terms are kind of subjective, I think. I'll explain a little more about birders in a few moments. As you can tell, birding is like any other hobby in that they come up with their own lingo. And they're pretty serious about that too, because in some circles, birders, twitchers, and chasers are used interchangeably as well. Confused yet? Me too. I'm blaming this wise old owl. It's estimated that at least 40 million people are into birding, and some sources have that number as high as 48 million, and that's just in the United States. Bird watchers study birds in the wild, which is why just owning a bird doesn't make you a bird watcher. Bird watching is learning to identify birds in the wild and their unique characteristics. It's great for kids because it's a hobby they can begin in their own backyard or at the local park. And listen to this, birding is the fastest growing outdoor activity in America. And there's plenty of books, clubs, associations, and organizations to help you in your birding adventures. Bird watchers have a tremendous respect for birds, and they're extremely knowledgeable, and they contribute an enormous amount of information on the subject. You might call this group citizen scientists. It turns out that birds tell us a lot about the health of the environment. So even though I'm not into birding, I'm kind of glad birding is a thing. Just like any hobby, some people are into their hobby more than others. Serious bird watchers don't just look at birds. Birders are identified in some circles as bird watchers who might be professional or amateur and take their birding to the next level. These birds, there's just something a little scary about them. I'm just saying, they're just kind of hanging out here. I feel like they're gonna like get me or something. Like I said earlier, some sources link birders with chasers and twitchers, and it makes sense to me that the best chasers or twitchers would also have to be birders, but I don't think we should assume that all birders are chasers and twitchers. That'll make more sense later, and I promise I'm not making this up. Birders aren't just into seeing and identifying wild birds. Birders learn to identify and even locate birds by the different sounds birds make. But many bird watchers do the same thing, but would never want to be called a birder. Why? Maybe it has something to do with the fact that birders don't necessarily watch any old bird. As Rosen puts it, Ahab wasn't fishing. He's referring to Ahab from Moby Dick and highlights two things. One, being obsessed with finding the right bird, and common birds aren't that important to birders. But there's another reason birders seem to be set apart from other bird watchers. Because in some circles, birders refer to a group of bird watchers that fall somewhere between the common bird watcher and another group called either chasers or twitchers. In fact, some sources identify birders as being a part of the vast intelligence network for chasers and twitchers. 
Chasers and Twitchers are two birds from the same feather. Get it? See what I did there? A chaser is the American version of the English term twitcher to describe the same type of bird watcher. But for these bird watchers, it's not as much about watching and identifying birds as it is finding the specific birds they need to complete their prize checklist. And their entire hobby is about completing lists. They travel all over the globe for rare bird sightings. And this isn't just about finding the best bird watching vacation you can afford. It's harder than you think. And it's why this hobby is so competitive. First, chasers are dealing with wild birds and like any other wild animal, birds aren't too predictable despite the fact that chasers are using their vast intelligence network. No, seriously, that's a thing. And chasers themselves are in the wild, so they're having to deal with nature, things like insects, bad roads, and always the weather. One chaser's approach to a wild bird can affect viewing for other chasers, or bird watchers for that matter. Let's say you're a chaser trying to fill your list, and the next item on your list is the red-headed Willy Weezy, and it just so happens that you're the first to arrive at the Weezy's pre-ceremonial migration location. Now, I've included a link in the description about the Willy Weezy and their unique pre-ceremonial migration location. Anyway, you can mess things up for other chasers who are right behind you who are also trying to complete their list by making too much noise or getting too close to the bird. And maybe chasers do things like this to other chasers on purpose. Who knows? It's a competition. As you might be guessing, these enthusiasts are not too popular with most bird watching communities. Twitchers and chasers are obsessed and extremely competitive, and they have a vast intelligence network that some say is comprised of birders who inform them of a precise time or an exact location of the amazing bird watching event. This is why the term birder means different things to different people in the birding community. But the thing about birders is that they're also dude friendly. And in one birding glossary, a dude is an actual birding term, and it means an average bird watcher. So maybe birders have one foot planted in birding and one foot planted in chasing. They're like double agents. If this seems vaguely familiar, it may be because you've seen the movie The Big Year. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, but these bird watchers are portrayed as bird brains and I'm not sure that's fair or how much of the movie is like real life. The movie uses the term birders to describe the characters in the movie, and that's if I'm remembering the movie right. But this movie is really describing chasers and twitchers. Chasers and twitchers are disliked in the birding world because of the competitive nature of their hobby and that it disrupts the environment and it hurts bird populations. Not to mention that from what I understand, they're kind of a pain to deal with in the birding world. And to think this entire journey started with an owl. But you know what makes me wonder? Are we watching them or are they watching us? So are you into birding or are you a birder or even a chaser? Maybe you're a twitcher. I'd love to hear all about it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. My name is Bill Marion and this is A Nose for Life. If you have time, check out some of these other videos.